So I want to title today's message, The Body of Christ. Yes, sir. The Body of Christ. Well, today is our family worship service. And for those of y'all that are new, our family worship service is when, we, when our kids <clears throat> join us in worship service uh, and our Sprouts Nursery Ministry and our Harvest Kids volunteers get an opportunity to take a break uh, from serving and they get a chance to worship with us as well. Uh, we don't apologize for having family worship here at Harvest Amen. Uh, because we love our kids and we believe there's a benefit yes, sir. for them occasionally coming in and seeing us worship the Lord together. Yes, sir. Yes. And we know that there's a benefit absolutely for them to be in kid-friendly environments and have the word taught to them in a way that they can understand it. Um, but in this spirit of being family worship, and in light of that, I want to begin today's sermon with a kid-friendly music video. Um, it's a popular children's song with a little rhythm and blues remix. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, no, it's not trap music. <laughs> I said R&B remix. So hopefully we can get this pulled up. I want this to intro the sermon for today. Y'all felt that. I saw y'all. I saw you. I knew. I know. I know. I, know. I know. told you I had a little R&B remix to it. We believe in contextualizing things. Uh, so um, the purpose of that children's song is to teach kids about the parts of the human body. Yes. And when we look at our bodies, they truly are wonders to behold. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 139, verse 14, the psalmist writes this. He says, I praise you, speaking of God, because I am, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. From dust and a rib... God masterfully created man's body and woman's body, respectively. Yes, sir. So it is no surprise to see Paul here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31, use the physical body as an analogy to talk about the spiritual body of Christ, that is the church, and spiritual gifts. Yes, sir. Though our physical body and the spiritual body of Christ are different in nature, they do have some similarities. Yes, sir. Here's the first truth that I think Paul points out to us in this passage. In verses 12 through 13, Paul first talks about the body of Christ having many members, but is one body. Yes, sir. You see it there, verse 12 and 13, he says, for just as the body is one, you got to get the image. You can even look at yourself and get the image that he is talking about your physical body. It says, for just as the body is one and has many parts or members and all the parts of that body, though many are one body, so also is Christ. Do you know what Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, and Tamika Catchings all have in common? They were all a part of the Smith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame class of 2020. Mm. I don't know if you know this or not, but there is a fairly elaborate process related to being inducted into this Hall of Fame. There's a screening committee who reviews all the nominees and then selects the finalists. And then the Basketball Hall of Fame Board of Trustees then takes their turn and reviews the finalists before passing them on to be officially and finally voted on by the Honors Committee. Suffice it to say, there are many people involved in the induction process of players and coaches into the, hall, in the, into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Well, Paul says that we as Christians... Yes, sir follow him, have been once and for all spiritually inducted into one body, Come on, man. the body of Christ. I want you to see it there. He says again, verse 13, for we are all baptized by one spirit into one body. Yes, sir. Paul uses the word baptized, but it's 
That's the, that's the intent behind that word. That means to be placed into. Yes. Yes. It means to be inducted, if you will, into the body of Christ. And note that according to verse 13, that the induction, our spiritual induction, Chris and Jackie, was not um, facilitated by a committee. Come on, Doc. It was facilitated by one person. Yes, yes. God the Holy Spirit. It's right there, verse 13. Again, he says, for we were all baptized by, in, or with one spirit. So we have been inducted, spiritually inducted into the body of Christ. Here's something else that you need to know about the Basketball Hall of Fame. With the Basketball Hall of Fame, that honor is only reserved Reagan for a select group of players. Yes, sir. Um, but one of the awesome things about Christianity, Danny, is all believers in Jesus get inducted into the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, y'all don't believe me. Look at verse 13. He says, for we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks. Yes. Whether slaves or free, we were all baptized into one body. I hope you didn't skip that. If you are a believer, it doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. Yes, sir. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. You have been inducted into the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Black Christians. Yes. White Christians. Hispanic Christians. Asian Christians. Christians, whether Jew or Greek, yes, sir. if you are in Christ, you are in the body of Christ. Yes, sir. It doesn't matter what your nationality is. Yes. Are you American Christian? Are you a Christian from Kenya? Uh -huh. Are you from Antigua? <laughs> are you from Europe? Are you from Asia? If you are a believer in Christ, it doesn't matter your nationality. You have been inducted into the body of Christ. It doesn't matter what your family history is. Yes, sir. It doesn't matter if you were raised in a two-parent part, two parent traditional home or if you were raised in a single-parent home. If you yes, are sir. a believer Jesus, in Jesus, Michael, you have been inducted into the body of Christ. It doesn't matter what your socioeconomic status is. You yes, could sir. be working class, middle class, or upper class. If you believe in Jesus, you, if you have turned from your sin and trusted in Christ, yes. you have been spiritually inducted into the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Yes. But not only have we been inducted by one spirit into the body of Christ, I hope you didn't close your Bible. In verse 13, at the end of the verse, we also, Paul says, we all have been given one spirit to drink. Come on, man. I love this image because this image, uh, Daniel, this image speaks of us being infused with. Yes, yes. Think about when you drink. You, you, you take this in and it fills you. Yes, yes. This, this is another image that Paul uses to speak of the initial permanent indwelling of the spirit. To give you another image, when you became a believer, this is for every Christian in the room. It doesn't matter if you are a teenager, a middle schooler, in elementary school, or an adult. If you are a believer in Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, as it were, got the keys to your house, the house of your life, and moved in permanently. Come on, man. Got his backpack, his duffel yes, bag. Sir. He has moved in, <laughs> and he is not going anywhere. Yes, sir. You can't evict him. Yes, sir. You can't kick him out of your house. The Holy Spirit is there to reside in you and with you forever. This is what it means to, to drink of the one spirit. You may not necessarily see this in your English version, but the verb drink here. And I know uh, uh, those, those of y'all who love studying the Bible in depth will appreciate this. It's in what is called the aorist tense. Mm -hmm. that's, that's Greek tense in the Greek language. It's in the aorist tense. And, and so in this context of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the aorist tense simply means that this was um, punctiliar action. 
Doctor! <laughs> I'm not trying to impress. Please understand. That's not what I'm doing. Punctilier action. That is action that occurred at one point, at one point in the past. Uh -huh. Punctilia. You, you have been indwelt with the Holy Spirit permanently at one point in the past. Just one point. Come on, Doc. You, you don't need two points. Yes, sir. You don't need three points in Come your on. life. On, Just one point in your past. What time, in, what time in the past? The moment you trusted Jesus, Jesus. Yes, you were filled, you were indwelt with the Spirit. Yes, sir. This one time, it's one time, objective reality, that's what this is, rather than a subjective experience. Um, that's what the indwelling of the Spirit is. You don't, you don't feel anything right. with the indwelling of the Spirit. Because it happens momentary, at the moment, simultaneously, when you trusted Jesus. You, you don't necessarily feel it, anything. Listen, it's like uh, we have graduates in the room. It, it's like at, at one point, uh, and I'm a graduate myself, at one point uh, in time, you officially graduated. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like before the graduation took place and all that kind of stuff, there was a point where you technically, uh, y'all follow me, yes, objectively, yes. according to the standards of your school, of the academy, you were considered to be a graduate. Yes, sir. You, you, you finished. Yes. I remember when I finished my doctoral degree, Chris, um, I was talking to one of my advisors, uh, Jackie, and my advisor, uh, after he told me that my grade was submitted, that um, he said that I can, you can now be called doctor. Because he said, technically, objectively, you've met all the requirements. Yes, yes. Now, my conferral happen later. That, that happens at graduation. That's maybe something that I experienced. But the point I'm trying to get you to see is that when it comes to the indwelling of the spirit, the indwelling of the spirit is that technical part. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you don't necessarily experience anything. It's just an objective reality that happens to every believer. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. So, yes. Yes. Great, as an aside, as we continue, will you note that the primary reason why someone is nominated and voted to be inducted into the hall, basketball hall of fame, is because of his or her achievements mm -hmm. in sport, yes. in the sport. Kobe Bryant, 18-time NBA All-Star, five-time NBA champion. Tamika Catchings, 10-time WNBA All-Star and four-time Olympic gold medalist. Wow. Tim Duncan. 15-time NBA All-Star and three-time NBA Finals MVP. Yeah. Kevin Garnett, Garnett, 15-time NBA All-Star and nine-time NBA All-Defensive first-time selection. Yes. Do you know, when it comes to being inducted into the body of Christ, though? Come on, Doc. Come on, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't earn your spot Come on, man. in God's Hall of Heaven. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. You didn't do anything yes, sir. to be inducted into the body of Christ. We didn't earn our spot. Our spiritual induction into the body of Christ had nothing, had zero to do with your achievements or my achievements. Yes, sir. Yeah. Didn't have, it had nothing, Michael, to do with our spiritual or moral resume. Had nothing to do with the fact that we attended church or we were raised up in the church. Had nothing yeah. to do with we had good hearts and we were good people and we never did this these sins had nothing yes, to sir. do with that whatsoever you know what it had everything to do with though it had everything to do with not your accomplishments but Jesus, Jesus. accomplishment on your behalf yes, when he lived his perfect life his sinless life on your behalf he died a substitutionary death on the cross for your sins, yes, and he was raised bodily from the dead. Jesus, brothers and sisters, is the GOAT. Jesus yes, is the greatest yes, of all time. Yes, sir. And there ain't nobody like him. Yes, sir. There is no human like him. There is no founder of any other religion Come on, Doc. like him. Yes, sir. He is, in one sense, in a league all by himself. So, so first, Paul wants us to know that the body of Christ has many members, but we're one body. All of us have 
one spirit, all of us have been baptized into the body of Christ. Every one of us. Your child, if they are a believer, is in the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Your uncle, if he is a believer, is in the body of Christ. You, if you are a believer, you are in the body of Christ. But here's the second truth, and we're almost done. The second truth that Paul wants us to realize and embrace is that the body of Christ needs every member. I'm going to say it again. The body of Christ needs every member. Member. Yes, sir. Look with me in verses 14 through 17. Paul writes, Indeed, the body is not one part, but many. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I don't belong to the body. It is not for that reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an ear, an, an eye, I don't belong to the body. It is not for that reason any less a part of the body. Verse 17, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Verse 19, and if they were all the same part, where would the body be? Yes. Verse 20, as it is, there are many parts, but one body. Yes, sir. The body of Christ, hear Paul's words again, does not consist of one member or one part, but many. Therefore, hear this somebody, no one should think he or she does not belong to the body because he or she does not possess a certain spiritual gift. That's what, that's what Paul says. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. The scripture admonishes us in another place in Paul's writings to not think too highly of ourselves. But according to this passage, y'all follow what Paul is saying. We should not think too lowly of ourselves either. Yes, sir. Yes. You see, some of us, we, don't, we, we all have a problem with thinking too highly of ourselves, but there are also some of us who think too lowly mm, wow. of ourselves. Did you hear what Paul writes and how he says that there were some, some believers who said, behold, verse 15, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. Right, right. <laughs> Do you see he's, that somebody's thinking too, uh, because I don't have, because I'm not that body part, that I don't belong to the body. And, and listen, somebody here, somebody here needs to stop thinking that you are not a valuable part of the local body of believers here at Harvest or wherever you belong to because you don't have this spiritual gift yes, or sir. that spiritual yes, gift. Yes. Like a body with only one member, the church would actually be severely dysfunctional yes, sir. if it was only functioning with one spiritual gift. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Something, Thank you. you know, a one member only body may work in a cartoon, <laughs> but it doesn't work in the church. Yeah. And the reason it doesn't work in the church is because God designed his body, the church, to have many Members, according to verse 18, watch what Paul says. But as it is, God has arranged each one of the parts in the body just as he wanted. Please don't read that too fast. And please don't just read that up here objectively. Read it personally. Yes, sir. Do you know that God, for those of y'all that are members of Harvest, that God has placed you here at harvest and has given you a particular gift or gifts on purpose? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yeah. You becoming a member of harvest wasn't by accident. Yes, sir. And the gift or gifts that God has given you are not on accident. God purposely led you here, led you to become a member and has given you when you got saved, he gave you the Holy Spirit at least one gift to be used in this local body. Okay. All right. Notice, and this is a word from the word to somebody, you are essential. Yes, sir. You, individually, you are essential to us reaching more of our potential as a local body of believers. 
Are y'all hearing what Paul is saying? Yes, sir. Please apply this to you. Don't, don't turn to your neighbor and take your mask down and give him a high five and a smile. And I'm not going to ask you to turn to your neighbor and tell him you are essential. No, tell yourself through the scriptures, God is saying to you, you are essential to this local body. Do you know we can't fully function the way God desires for us without you? Yes, sir. And your spiritual gift? Yes, sir. I hope this is landing on you. Harvest cannot function the way God desires for us to function without you and your spiritual gift or gifts. Yes, sir. Yes. You are essential to our health as a local body. Yes, sir. Uh, you just thought you just come on in here in service and just going to sit and be cute and handsome. <laughs> no, that's, that's not the only reason why God has you a part of this church. It's not just for you to come and only sit and receive. He's giving you a gift that you are supposed to be using yeah, yeah. for the benefit of this local church family. So every member of this local body is needed. If you were not needed, God wouldn't have sent you here. Huh. Wow. Ha. Say it. If I ask you, how, why did you come and join Harvest? And I, every, every member this. We ask every member this. And they'll, they'll say, well, I was, you know, praying or whatever. And I've been searching and looking. And God, you know, put on my heart. I've been coming here. Or somebody told me. And I came and visited. And I love the feel of the church and all that. And I love what y'all are about. And I love the diversity and the et cetera, et cetera. I love this and I love that. And we say, so you, you for sure now. That the Lord led you here. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Then he didn't just lead you here to sit. Come on, Doc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he led you here, he led you here, yes, so that you can grow spiritually with us together, but he has given you a gift. You are essential. You are essential. Yeah. You are essential. That's not profit. That's what the body. You are essential yeah. to our local body. Yes, you so just as we should not devalue ourselves and the gifts or gift that God has given us, hear this, we should also not be dismissive of others who are gifted differently than us. Keep your Bible open. Verse 21, Paul says, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Right. Can y'all see the neck roll right there? Can you envision? The, I don't need you. Or again, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. There is no Christian who should think or say to another Christian that because he or she is not gifted like me, he or she is not needed. Wow. Paul is obviously confronting here, Jordan and Darius, he's confronting and rebuking arrogant attitudes that some believers express towards other believers and their spiritual gifts. Paul seeks to right this wrong thinking by making three points in verses 22 through 24. First, would you note with me in verse 22 that Paul says that the thought to be weaker part or gift of the body those parts or gifts, watch this, are indispensable. Yes. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it with me. In verse 22, he says, on the contrary, those parts of the body that are weaker are indispensable. Then he continues and says the second point. He says, the thought to be less honorable parts or gifts are bestowed with greater honor. Do y'all see that there? Yes, sir. Yeah. On the contrary, verse 22, those parts of the body that are weaker are indispensable. Verse 23, and those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we clothe these with greater honor. Everybody in here got some toes. Hey, shoulders, knees, and toes. Everybody has toes in here. Um, some of you probably didn't give that much thought and don't give that much thought to your pinky toe. <laughs> Until right. Come on, Doc. <laughs> you hit it yes. against something. Oh, Lord. That's a 
It was then that you saw how much of an impact your little pinky toe has on your whole body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Functioning. Anybody been there? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Walking through your living room, running or something, and you run smack dab into the corner of your furniture or your couch. Yes. Wow. And your whole body just, you just in the fetal position. Your whole body is cringing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Your whole body is affected by it. God doesn't want us to necessarily have to have pain for us to get the point. He is saying, listen, it's the same way when it comes to those what we might seem or think to be weaker gifts. The pinky toes of the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like you, you better give that pinky toe its due because step, stomp your pinky toe spiritually and see what happens. Everybody in this church going to feel it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. But he says also the, the thought to be less honorable parts or gifts, we bestow greater honor. Um, so not only, not, not only do you all have toes, but you, also, you, all, you all have ankles. You have ankles. Yeah, you do. You have an ankle. Yes, baby, you do. That's why we love y'all being in here because y'all just so interactive. Thank you so much. <laughs> For that, if I ain't going to get another amen interaction, it's coming right there. Baby, there you go. So, so listen, listen, y'all. Um, when I was, when I was a, a younger whippersnapper, like when I, was, when I was 18, when I was in high school, uh, y'all know I'm not going to recount my story, my life testimony, but y'all, some of y'all know me. You know I had hoop dreams, all right? Yes, I wanted to be another Muggsy Bowes. Hush up, hush up. <laughs> Daniel, don't look, Darius, don't look at me like that. I wanted to be, I wanted to be another Spud Webb. I felt if they could do it, I could do it. And so, what you laughing for? I'm serious. Don't that? I'm like that's sensitive. So, so, but I love basketball. I would play it all the time, man. When I was in middle school, high school, I would play all. Y'all hear me? All the time, all the time. It didn't matter what time. It could be raining. It could be. It didn't. It didn't matter. If, you know, if, if you got a ball in the court, I'm there. So we would go to a particular uh, basketball court uh, park in Austin, Texas, and we would go there. It was in, it was in our neighborhood, and you know, we would play, play pickup games. And I don't know where I was coming from. I remember I, somebody just said, hey, you want to go hoop? And I was like, hoop, yeah. Man, you ain't got to ask me, like, when, what time, when are we going? He said, we're going right now. We'll meet you there, down in the park five, in about 15 minutes or whatever. And I said, cool. I got on my BMX bike with the little pegs on it, <laughs> with the tennis balls in it. <laughs> And uh, have a little nostalgia. But I rolled, man, rolled down to the park, rolled down there. And, and, and I was, Shalanda, I was in my church clothes, my dress clothes. Because back in the day, you know, we had to wear dress clothes to go to church. And so, uh, and so I was in my, I had my slacks on, Jackie. I had my, my penny loafers on. Uh, and I had my button-down shirt, shirt on. And I was like, they were like, dude, would you, you didn't want to change? I was like, I don't need to change. Like, you said ball. Let's ball. Check up. Pick, come on. Like, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, ball up. Check. Let's go. Don't worry about what I got on. Like, I'm good. I'm going to break your ankles in my penny loafers. That's, that's what's about to happen. And so, man, I'm sitting up there. I'm playing. I'm balling. I'm doing all kind of moves. Derek, I'm, I'm doing all kind of moves, CJ. I'm taking it to it. And then all of a sudden, I, I did a turn. I did some kind of deal. I don't know, some hot sauce move that I was trying to do on the court. And, man, I sprained my ankle. I got, if I don't have to tell you that, that if I thought, I didn't, at that point, I had given no thought to my ankles. I thought I was, as a young person, you know, you just tend to think that you were invincible. Right. Not after that day. I was like, Jesus. Like, I, I sprained my ankle, and I realized that what I thought is kind of like maybe ineffective or just, you know, not important was very important because I couldn't run like I needed to. I was getting my ankles broke. <laughs> I couldn't keep up. I couldn't defend like I needed to because I had sprained my ankle. Paul is saying, listen, you need to, those parts that we may think are not that, all that, they are very important. And we need to bestow, we need to bestow greater honor on them because they are. Because we don't, we don't tend to do that with our ankles. Right? Or our pinky toe. Nobody walks around and say, y'all, 
we don't naturally just say, look at this. <laughs> Y'all see this pinky toe? Let me, <laughs> man, let me take my shoe out of my sock. You, you haven't noticed? <laughs> we don't naturally do that, right? We just put on our open toe shoes and we go about our business. We may get a pedicure or whatever, but it ain't like we call attention to it. Right. Right. Are y'all following? What? Not not specifically. We do, we we include the pinky toe in all the toes. Yes, sir. You yes. say, look at my feet, look at my toes. Right. Right. But Paul is saying, listen, no, no, no. You 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 need to give those body parts, those spiritual gifts, those members of the body, greater honor. Yes, sir. Yes. But then he says, lastly, that the unpresentable parts, he says, are treated with greater modesty. Now we are all grown here, so I just need you to go there. You just go there. All right, talk. Okay, you got to connect the dots in terms of what he's saying. He's not being vulgar here. What Paul is saying is he, the point that he's making here is he's saying that we need to give greater care and attention to certain body, or certain gifts of the body because they are normally behind the scenes. Yes, sir. Yes. Are y'all tracking with this? Yes, sir. So think about it. Think about it. Your, your hands or arms are more presentable parts. Yes, sir. Like, y'all all got y'all hands out. Ain't nobody sitting up in here with gloves on your hands, right? But I, I mean, well, besides you, Carl, but that's for a purpose. You, that, but I'm talking about for style purposes. You don't go to work like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you know, I mean, well, you get the point. Pre-COVID, <laughs> pre-COVID, right? I mean, none of us, I mean... We generally don't walk around with gloves on. I, and I, I know the analogy breaks down. I know some of y'all from Illinois and your Midwest and the East Coast, y'all talk about well, when it gets cold, we do put gloves. <laughs> Stop. I'm not trying to go that deep. The point is, I was saying, we usually don't put anything on here. We don't dress this up usually. Right. Right? Our arms are more presentable parts. So y'all got arms. See, y'all got arms out. Some of y'all are cold. You got jackets. But generally, it's summertime in Texas. Them jackets coming off. You, you're following me. It's coming off. And you, you're, not, you're generally not going to be walking around generally saying, giving that much attention to your arms. Right. Now, I'm not saying, Paul is not saying we don't give any attention because we get ashy arms for those of us that are, are a little darker. <laughs> and uh, do y'all, does everybody get ashy arms? I don't know. There's no, okay. They probably ashy, but they just can't see it. Yeah, okay, all right, so, but, but your arms get ashy, right, or you get sunburn, there we go, sunburn, right, are y'all following what part, you, and you got to do a little something, right, but there, but there are other parts of your body where you, he's saying you take greater care, yes, 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 because socially they're not presentable, yes sir, yes, Right. So he says the point, again, is that that we need to give greater attention and care to people in our church who have gifts that are not so recognizable. So people who work in the nursery yes. or like CJ, who's one of our high school students that's behind the computer screen over there. Like Katie moved, but she was back there too, or Ransom, usually people, or Carl. It's just, he's sitting in a stool, but usually you probably won't recognize him, but you know, some of y'all don't know why he's there, and we're going to keep it that way. Amen. He's just there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Or Debbie, for example, yes. who's, who's, who is out front a little bit, but people sometimes don't pay attention to greeters. They just can kind of look over them because it's just a, a normal thing that churches do now. Or you think about the facility team, the people that you generally don't see right, right. who got this building cleaned up and ready for you. Yes, yes. Right? And not just that, not just in terms of people who, who serve in public or private style kind of ministries or behind the scene type of ministries, like somebody else, like, you know, like Jackie, for example, who, who does our website management. You don't see her do her work, but she does it. Yes, sir. Or the finance team, you don't see them do their work, but they're doing it behind the scenes. Or our, our audiovisual people, they're sitting in the, in the audience and you don't generally see them unless they get up, if <laughs> unless you hear something, go, you know, go er, some feedback and then the, uh, one of the brothers or sister jumps up with the iPad and it's like, oh, he, yeah, I know, they, they must be running audio. Or when everybody in the church, when the, when the members and the leaders look back at the person, now like everybody's looking back at the individual and you're like, oh, that must be the, <laughs> the audio person. That's working the stuff, right? So you get the point. The Paul is saying that, listen, give greater care and concern and attention to those people who use their gifts behind the scenes. 
I love this because I saw something this morning when I was walking in. I saw one of our members, one of our dear members, uh, Nancy Brooks. I saw her put her gift into action. She had, she had, she had a balloon and uh, I think a card and some other things. And nobody really saw it. But for those of us who were around, but, but generally it's one of those behind the scenes things where she used her gift of encouragement to encourage one of our students. And she didn't expect me to do that, but the Bible, I'm just doing what the Bible says, do need to give them greater honor and recognition. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. According to verses 24 through 26, this is how God composed the body, giving honor to the part that lacks so that there won't be no, there won't be any division yes. Yes. in the body. That's why God did this. So that we won't be running around here envious and we won't be running around here feeling in value or feeling not valuable or valued because we're not behind the podium mm-hmm. or we're not behind the microphone or behind the keyboard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God says, I don't want there to be any division in the church. So, so what I've instructed you to do, do that. So when you notice and you see people working behind the scenes, even if you don't necessarily see the work that they do all the time, but if you, under, if you know that they are doing the work, then help us to give them honor. And attention because they, they deserve it by God's grace. Yes, sir. Yes. Paul closes this section in verse 27 through 31. He starts to speak plainly. He's, he was using this image the whole time, but y'all, he speaks plainly. Look with me in verse 27 through 31. He says, now you are the body of Christ. You see how he makes it plain there. He says, I've been talking about the image of your body, your physical body. He says, now you are the body of Christ. Yes and individual members of it. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles. I'm not going to stay there. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. Next, miracles. Then gifts of healing, helping, administrating various kinds of tongues. Remember I told you last week that the gift list that you see earlier in 1 Corinthians 12 was a representative list? Yes. Because there is no exact replica of list in the Bible. This is a prime example because in this same chapter, Paul lists a couple of gifts that he didn't list earlier. Yes, 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 sir. He lists helping and administrating. Yes, sir. Yes. With various kinds of tongues. Watch Paul. We're closing. Are, are all apostles? Watch this. The, you know the implied answer to every question you're about to read here no. is no. Yes, sir. God's about to learn you today. Watch yes, it. Yes, he is. <laughs> are all apostles? No. no. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Do all do miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Now don't change the don't change your answer now. Do all speaking of the tongues? No. No. I'm not gonna stay here. But 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 this is one part of the Bible that disproves the fact. Of those who say, dear, dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, so I'm not, not condemning and knocking them, but there are those who tell you that the, the sign, it's a universal sign of those who have the Holy Spirit, who've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues. Right. And that if you don't speak in tongues, then you have not experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. That is impossible to be the case. Well, you say, well, Acts says that they were baptized and they spoke in tongues, but that was not everybody. Those were special occasions that God did on on specific occasions because he wanted to show his people that the gospel had gone to other people groups. Yes, sir. And it wasn't just for the Jews. Yes, sir. You track it for yourself. There's Gentiles and there's Samaritans. There are, there are different people groups that God especially allowed the Holy Spirit to come on them and they, he allowed them, those groups, to speak in tongues as a sign to Jewish believers that God has extended the gospel and the salvation has come to the Gentiles as well. Mm-hmm. But that's not a normative experience. Because tongues is a spiritual gift. And not everybody had, according to, read it yourself. Paul, don't look at me. Look at, do all speak in other tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. But desire the greater gifts. And I will show you an even 
better way. What Paul means here in terms of greater gifts, he's not saying that there are gifts that are that are inherently better than others. What he's making mention here is what he will mention in 1 Corinthians 14 when we get to it, that there are some gifts that in their exercising, they contribute more to the spiritual growth of the body of Christ than other gifts, mainly the gift of tongues without an interpretation. Yes, sir. So he's saying, that's what he's saying here, to seek the great or desire the greater gifts. This is not an individual thing where he's telling you that you need to seek greater gifts. He's saying as a body of believers, he's saying we should want these gifts to be prominent in our life together as a church because they have more of an ability to edify and build up the church. Yes, sir. So, Three Musketeers. I love that movie. I don't know if any of y'all have seen it. There's been a number of iterations of it. Yes. Disney did one. And there's been a number of Three Musketeer movies, but in mostly all of the Musketeer movies, Michael and Eddie, they have a, um, they have a Musketeer creed. I wonder if anybody knows what their creed is. All for one and one for all. What that meant for the Musketeers is that each one of them, all for one, one for all, each one of them would use their strengths, their abilities, their energy, their skills, sword fighting skills. They would use all of that for the greater good of them all. All for one, and one for all. Paul is saying to us, Harvest family, and if you are a Christian at another local church, he's saying to you as well that, that Paul is not saying this, but I'm applying it, that may that be our rally cry. Yes, sir. Yes. As the body of Christ, one of them, all for one, and one for all, that we would appreciate the giftedness of one another and that we would individually commit to say, Lord, I'm going to use my gifts for the good of my local church family to your glory. So the question is, are you using your gift? Do you know what your gift or your gifts are? That God designs for you to use that. All of us. We use that all for the good of this one local body. Yes, sir. And that individually, we will be one for, for all. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for our time together. Thank you for teaching us this morning. We're grateful to know that you've gifted us, uh, Holy Spirit, to serve the church and to use our, our gifts to, uh, to benefit the local church. And so, Father, we want to pray for our family, for those who are members of our church. Lord, I ask that you will empower them, encourage them, help them to want to get involved in whatever that looks like, Father God, whether informal ministries or organized ministries we have here at the church or just do it through informal interactions with one another. Yes. Yes. We pray, I pray, we pray, Father, that you will strengthen us, Father God, that we will not sit on our gifts. We won't sit on the sidelines. You've called us to get into the game of serving one another through the use of our spiritual gifts. And so, Father, I pray that you will lovingly convict a fellow member of Harvest who's not doing anything in any shape, form, or fashion. God, will you help them to know, Lord, that they are valuable, they are essential, they are needed in this local body. And will you encourage them to step out and begin to use their gifts. And even if they don't know what their gift may be, just help them to get involved and you'll, you'll make that clear to them what they are gifted, what you've gifted them to be able to do. Father, we want to pray for the person that may be sitting here, Father, and they, um, they're here and they are kicking the tires of Christianity. They don't necessarily know if they believe all of this and they believe in Jesus. They don't know if they're going to heaven. Uh, they're not sure of that. Um, Father, we, we pray that you will lovingly convict them of their sin, that you will show them that you love them you created them to be in a relationship with you, but because of their sin, like ours, we've all been severed from a relationship with you. Uh, but that's why you gave Jesus to be our sin bearer, uh, to reconcile us back to you, to forgive us of our sins so that we can be forgiven of our sins. And we can be, we can be 
um, become your children and we can go to heaven. But that happens through faith in you alone, Jesus. And so we want to pray for that person that even now, as they're, as they're thinking, as they have their bow, heads bowed, or maybe they're just sitting there and they're processing all of this, we pray that you will grant them saving faith, Lord, that they will come to place their trust in Jesus as their personal Savior, Lord, and they will turn from their sin today. We pray for the fellow Christian who's here. And, uh, Lord, maybe they've been in church and uh, they got baptized when they were young, but they were not believers at that time. But you've been putting it on their hearts that they need to take that step of obedience and they need to be baptized now that they are believers in Jesus. So, Lord, we pray that you will give them the grace to make that decision today. And then there's a believer here, Lord, that they may have been visiting us or been coming here for a number of Sundays and have been praying about a place, a church for them to become a part of. Uh, Lord, we pray that you will put it on their hearts to make that decision today to begin steps to become a member of our local church. We would love to be their church family. We would love to, to pastor them, to shepherd them, to disciple them, and for them to walk with us together towards Jesus. Help them to make that decision today, Father. We pray you will bless, be honored uh, by our giving that we're going to do here in just a second. Uh, for those that are giving in person, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us with our jobs and the resources. We want to honor you by giving our first and our best in proportion to how you've blessed us. Yes, and Lord, for the Harvest family member that maybe has not been giving in the way that you have prescribed us to give, we pray that you will, you will convict them, Father, so that they can honor you uh, by giving of their first and their best and giving of it every time that they get paid here to your local church. We thank you, Father, so much uh, for this time. We pray you will bless us as we... Prepare to conclude our service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah.